Welcome back to the news, everyone. In stark contrast with the number of recent stories, today we've got a good story of a game doing well and the developers trying their hardest to best serve their customers. Have you heard the Final Fantasy login meme? Have you seen the Lalafell gif that's been spreading around? Well, yeah, FF14 is absolutely popping off. It's a situation where World of Warcraft has had a number of issues lately, and it's kind of blown up within the WoW community that FF14 is another option. That said, it's more than just WoW having a few issues. It's also that Final Fantasy XIV does appear, or at least the current prevailing narrative is that it has just got better and better with each expansion to the point where now it is at its peak. People are extremely excited about the upcoming and Walker expansion. However, sometimes a whole bunch of success very quickly can be a problem. And this has led to Mr. Yoshi P himself to do this player update post, which I think just does a really good job of letting you feel the developer's perspective on the incredible growth that this game seems to have experienced. So, Yoshida says there's been a extreme influx of new players, and he's basically going into some details as to how they are trying to fix things up. So, as mentioned before, the game is currently experiencing a dramatic increase in its player base, uh, not only limited to the global version served by the Japanese, American, and European data sensors, uh, centers, but also locally operated uh, the Chinese and Korean versions as well. So it's popping off everywhere. But he did say that in particular, it's the increase in the North America and EU over the past two weeks that has been quite staggering and unexpected. I wonder, a small part of it's actually your fault, Matt, because you sold me in the game. We did a bunch of, you know, the clips of us talking about the game kind of blew up, all, you know, a little bit in the internet. A few other people doing similar, of course. And, uh, you know, Asmogold, we've known him for a long time. He reacts to some of our videos. I believe he's like, he's listening to you evangelize the game. And he's like, oh, shit, seems interesting. And I'm fairly sure the two-week period that, um, that uh, Yoshi P's talking about here is in and around where Asmogold decides it's time to stream because that was a massive event in his stream, um, massive to the point where, you know, Square Enix staff were actively monitoring to ensure that it wasn't a disaster because of people stream sniping and things. So this game was absolutely popping off. People seem to be having a great time. And overall, it's all real happy stuff. So what's up? Well, they are raising the simultaneous login cap, uh, which, I mean, yeah, login servers. I mean, every time you try to log into this game, you get a queue. Now, at least in EU on, you know, Zodiac Light, seconds usually but i imagine it's quite bad in some of those really big like us data centers and servers perhaps um but anyway right so they're doing an upgrade there not too much to get into uh, for character creation though this is where it gets interesting right so any additional players attempting to log in will be placed in a queue must wait until the player already logged in logs out before um, they'll be admitted new characters cannot be created while the server is full and you may have seen loads of images spreading around social media of like hey are you an NA and you want to make a character in FF14? Sorry, that's legit what it's been like. In fact, the character that I have, I made a year and a bit ago when already it was very hard to make a character in Zodiac. And uh, I was going to make another character, change things up for property getting into the game. Now this year, I just could not find a time to make a new character. So I've rolled with one I already had. That's what it's like. And here's where it gets interesting, you know, while we regret having to do so, we would humbly ask two things from our players to ensure that new players have the opportunity to create characters. First, if you're not actively engaged in the game, log out rather than just idling. Second, we ask you avoid creating new characters during peak uh, congestion times. As the sort of thing, you know, should they have to ask this? No. But I think what's happening and why people are okay with this is overall people are coming in because the game's really good. And the developers, in this case, are being very open. And they are, I think, in fact, being quite humble. And often you could see this and think, oh, that's just bullshit corporate speak. But I think for the people who watch the fan fests, who watch like the 14-hour, you know, live letters from the producer, I think they know that it really is genuine. I mean, if you look at a World of Warcraft, if you had the devs talking, it would be genuine. But of course, Activision Blizzard PR is never going to let the developers talk in a way like that. Because I guess the culture of the two businesses is pretty damn different. So it's interesting stuff. They've even had to do this, and this must sting for them. In order to prioritize our paying customers, the login queue is not available to players using the free trial version. 
regardless of whether it occurs due to a surge in logins or world server reaching capacity. Logging in will only be possible for these players after a world's login queue has been cleared. That's pretty hardcore. Every time I've tried to log into this game, there's been a small queue. So I don't really know how possible a free trial is in the current climate. Now, in addition to this, auto logout is something they're doing an early implementation um, of it. It was supposed to be shipping in Endwalker. They're doing it in patch 5.58, um, where if no input is uh, detected for extended period of time, you'll be automatically logged out. And that's something where they can change that time to make it a bit more aggro. You were saying, Matt, it's about 15 minutes during an expansion launch, right? Uh, that's what I've heard from people, yeah. And I guess like 30 minutes around now. It's 30 minutes in there, yeah. Yeah. And then moving on, this is where you can see the struggle these devs are having. So a fundamental solution to congestion is an increase in world servers, as well as the addition of data centers. As we've already announced, we are currently in the final stages of preparing our new Oceana data center. At the same time, we've been moving forward plans to expand, uh, even further putting wheels into motion in the form of approving budgets, securing funding, and purchasing equipment. We intended to assess user numbers and planned content after the release of 6.0 and then have, uh, you know, work and new servers and all that be ready for 7.0. But now... They have reevaluated this, trying to see if it's faster for them to do a big increase in capacity. And here's the issues that they're facing. Number one, not enough servers because of the semiconductor shortage. As we know, semiconductor production has been a large issue in and around COVID. And that just means that coupled with an increase in the demand for electronics because of more people working from home, there's an international shortage of semiconductors, which in turn has resulted in a prolonged delay in the delivery of the servers that they're actually ordering for their data centers. They legit cannot get this shit quick enough. Then they've even looked into investing, like paying more than market value in order to get this stuff quick, but they can't. I mean, hey, it's just like uh, anyone who's tried to buy a GPU recently, you know? Matt, you were saying you get a ping from the stock checking Discord. Oh, but the graphics card is at like 80% over market value, over RRP. Wow. <laughs> so they say they're not giving up and they're uh, going to do what they can. The next problem then, travel restrictions, which has prevented their server infrastructure team from physically visiting the data centers and stuff like that. So overall, they're trying super hard and they are an unfortunate victim of their own success. Um, he says, as producer, the responsibility for being unable to predict the current influx of new players falls to me. In the days before an expansion's, or the days before an expansion's launch are supposed to be ones of excitement, but instead we've brought many players grief. And for that, I personally am extremely sorry. That is what players want to hear. That engenders trust with the developers, and it just shows that a little bit of transparency into the process, into what's actually going on, goes so much of a long way. That coupled with not having a pretty damaged dev player relationship. That's that's the entire story of FF14 so far. Ever since, like, if you've watched the Noclip documentary or any of the other many documentaries on, like, the rise and fall of uh, 1.0 and how that came into ARR, it is always just, these guys have tried and players have seen that. And this is just another case of Yoshi P shows up, shows up and goes, here's a 1700 word essay on why we have login queues. The, like some small depth as to why they actually have login queues in the first place. Never mind anything else. Then also what they're doing literally right now to solve it and the obstacles in their way. Mm. And that's like, for this, <laughs> it's like, imagine, compare that to any other problems with any servers that games have had recently. And it's not even just a case of like, it being a part of like Japanese culture or anything else. It is literally just Yoshi P has enough, has enough sway that he doesn't need to give a shit what Square Enix PR. Basically tell him, he can just go, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna talk to my players today. And here's what I'm gonna tell my players. And it's uh, like, the amount of trust that FF14 players have in him is insane as a result. Because not to say they've never done wrong by their players, but even when they do, they usually apologize and have a way to some sort of solution or will at least like set up their principle in stone and say, no, here's here's why we're not doing this. And it's just the thing. It's open and honest communication and it's completely insane to see. Completely yeah. insane to see. It feels weird and just how some other companies conduct themselves. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking maybe this isn't even appropriate to say, but I was just thinking, I'm pretty sure this is more communication about login queues and server caps than Blizzard have had over the 
Zach Jones Harassment case in terms of like raw word kind like maybe not but I mean, it f- feels that way like yeah yeah Blizzard's like so co- completely blinded by corporate bullshit that it's actually fallen on their staff to mm. make sure that you know players know that the staff are absolutely furious about this stuff because the company sure as hell doesn't communicate you know the, co- the company communicates that it's furious at California and that the problems actually aren't really there so that then it falls to the staff. They have to do that outside of corporate channels. Um, which, by the way, I mean, Blizzard have had multiple clampdowns on. In some cases, it is literally because of, like, developers getting into flame wars and people's DMs and Twitter. But, like, because that bullshit happened, Blizzard, like, clamped big, big, big down on the PR control over their devs and their, like, public communications policies. But it just goes to show, you know, you treat people right, they'll be accommodating, they'll be willing to just... You know, take you at, at your word and things. So it's it's great to see. For me, it's a continuing stark reminder that I am woefully behind. Mm. Um, and as much as, you know, my bard is like level 35, but I swapped over to Rogue. I'm doing the Rogue storyline because it is written by uh, by the lady who did Dark uh, Dark Knight and Lead for Shadowbringers. I believe she's also leading for Endwalker, right? Yep. Yep. So I was like, okay, hang on. I really want to get through the MSQ to, you know, go go through ARR um, and, like, get into the you know, Heaven's War, which I'm uh, very excited for, especially as people on our team keep on finishing the expansions and they're, like, you know, they put it into our Slack and our, our like, guild Discord of, like, oh, my God, this is so exciting. Um, but, no, I, I decided, like, no, I have to get the first, like, you know, one of the earlier instances of her writing. And, uh, yeah, now I'm going through the Rogue stuff. Stark reminder. The, the TikTok, TikTok, and Walker will be soon. Time is is collapsing, and hey, New World also a song to play. It's like, man, mm. there's a lot of good stuff out there. But it just yeah, it shows the game's doing damn well, and it seems like they deserve every bit of it. Yeah, it's like because obviously you can look at this and be like, oh, it's FF14. It's you know, it's currently everyone loves it at the minute in terms of as far as like community perceptions go. Everyone's obviously going to fawn over everything they say, but it is like if you're kind of listening, going, oh, well, you know, it's just it's just a developer responding. When's the last time you played a AAA game that had any sort of issue? and had, like, actual problems responded to by a developer. Because, you know, I'll see this stuff in indie games I own on Steam all the time. Yeah. Like, I keep going on about Rogue Legacy 2 where, when possible because that dev team, Cellar Door, are just like, oh, yeah, here's here's a patch. Oh, sorry, that patch is too buggy. Here's an emergency patch to fix it. Here's all of the balance changes and, like, direction changes we're taking. All the, like, really, really transparent stuff that makes me as a customer feel like I'm part of that journey. Yeah. And it's this kind of feels the same way where I am just a customer, but it is just... I'm happy to be along with that journey for them because I'm I'm rooting for them. They're doing stuff for me. I'm happy to pay it. Yeah, and it's not that it's easier in indie yeah. and, you know, some other things like yeah, with Rogue Legacy too. Because, I mean, like, if our game launches and we have, like, some crippling bug or something, you know, my way to deal with that is send tweet. <laughs> yeah. It's that easy. I, I guess it's just in those companies that make those layers and layers and layers of PR. It's a lot harder to be agile. Hmm. Um, But there you go. Do so well that you literally cannot buy servers fast enough. I mean, even even saying that they're pushing above market value is just like, this investment's going to be worth it for having players play. Can we please, like, name your price? We need servers. Like, sorry. <laughs> sorry, just can't, like. Well, I think they also know that when Endwalker... Because the thing about FF14, uh, in fairness to it and other MMOs, is it is a game with a lower budget than likes of World of Warcraft. And, you know, in terms of, like, the total amount of raid content per expense and stuff like that, you know, for, for some people, FF14 is like, you know, log in, play the expansion, you know, play the patches, log out again, wait for the next one. And it's just that sort of thing where, you know, that's that's a very happy way to play it. And, in fact, it's a way to play it that Yoshi P himself is even encouraged. So a lot of those veteran players who are kind of done with the current expansion and are off doing other things are going to come back. At the same time, and that would usually be enough to create a rocky launch because it's an MMO launch, and those are always a bit rocky. So now you combine that with the amount of sprouts this game's got, and it's like, goddamn, they must be bracing for impact for Endwalker launch. They have to be. Like, I don't know what they're going to do about it. There's going to be queues, because I mean, I think there are currently queues of um, usually a couple hundred on EU servers, and they pass in, like, a couple minutes, usually. Yeah. Just because there's a decent amount of people logging in and out, and also the, like, the AFK, ta- AFK timer, stuff like that. But the, e- the, sorry, the NA ones, I'm pretty sure I've seen upwards of, like, 1,300, 1,400 queues. 
that can be you know go you know go take a shower come back you'll you'll be logged in that kind of thing what is a decent amount of time so, so is that what happens when a few hundred thousand people see asthma gold stream yeah almost certainly almost certainly like free trial yeah free trial the oh man complete edition remember the oh yeah it was 60 percent sale like shortly after as decided he was stream or around that time just straight up like <laughs> speaking of agility that was a pretty agile move from their sales team just wait wait why is everyone playing our game oh shit put it on sale put it on sale please and then that means they'll be paying customers and they won't have to deal with the uh lack of login queue because they're paying customers and they get priority which is you know it's interesting to have that be said as well because i thought it would have been some weird technical limitation when i first like found out that uh free trials couldn't do that but now the fact that it is in order to prioritize or paying customers it is them going no the people who have been paid us money deserve to be in where free trials you know they can wait like interesting that you would say that so in such a brazen manner it seems very like like that's not a good thing to read if you're a free trial player you go well, yeah well screw you then but well I, I think the ideal way to do it would be a priority queue for yeah. subs and then anytime the priority queue hits zero and then work through the backlog of the non-priority queue yeah of course which would likely mean probably multiple hours for the trials but mm. at least that would be better than just no access hey. to queue yeah of course i think is a bit less good it's probably not a good it's experience for free trials like yeah, I can't imagine. Can't imagine, yeah. but it's fantastic stuff to see a game do so well, especially uh, <laughs> especially with Yoshi P now working on FS16 as a producer. I feel like the whoever's at the top of the Square Enix is probably having the time of their life. Just like, oh man, is this like? Are these going to drive sales to FF16 because this dude's in charge and doing a great job? Holy shit, please! Almost certainly. Yeah, I mean, even he's even saying that recently where he's kind of bringing the same uh, ideas over to FF16, where he was saying, yeah, we're not going to show the game until we show you something that you want to buy. And if we're going to show you something that you want to buy, we'll make sure you can buy it whenever. So basically, we're not going to show you anymore until the pre-order's ready. Which is just, you know, it's obviously that's going to be good for their them making money. But at the same time, it's like, nice. Certainly beats what, uh, certainly beats being shown a load of shit that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. I wonder what company did that. <laughs> Feeling kind of frosty, you know, high wind, sort of snow, frost mm. in the air. Is it is lizard? Oh, yeah, them. Yeah, they totally didn't do that with Warcraft Three or Forge. Yeah. Another story we've yeah. recently done. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the the idea that the old favorite of Blizzard Entertainment is having rings run around them by Square Enix of all places, who have never particularly been super strong at dealing with their customers or anything like that. It's just like people weren't really huge fans of them outside of the FF series. But now I hear the name Square Enix and I'm just like, you know what? I trust them pretty well. Yeah. And that's insane. Even with the, the journey from them doing the old shitty Final Fantasy remasters into the new Pixel remasters that actually look pretty good. Like, what the fuck happened here? Like, I will finally say I'm still very skeptical of Western Square Enix because I am a Deus Ex fan. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. So, yes. But... I think that's it for this story. Yep. There we go then. Uh, hopefully they can get their servers before Endwalker. I think that would be a good thing. Um, that's it for us. Take care. See you later.